This is a video on modern drama. The main aspects of modern drama, movements, features, themes, we will discuss today. First and foremost, the theater of the absurd. The theater of the absurd was a very important post-war movement. The term theater of the absurd came from Martin Eslin's book, The Theater of the Absurd. This theater was a response to the collapse of moral, religious, political, and social structures in the 20th century. You know, after the Second World War, after the Holocaust, etc., there was complete disorder in the 20th century, a complete collapse of moral, religious, political, social structures. This was represented in the theater of the absurd. The theater of the absurd was influenced by Dadaist and Surrealist movements. The theater of the absurd was also influenced by existentialism. The theater of the absurd showed the irrationality of this world, the incomprehensibility and meaninglessness of this post-war world. They showed the violence and paranoia, the terror that controlled the people after the Second World War. It was Martin Eslin who defined the movement. What does theater of the absurd do? It is striving to express its sense of senselessness of the human condition. The inadequacy of the rational approach, that means reason is not adequate. Reason is not enough. Reason is not sufficient. The open abandonment of rational devices and discursive thought, abandoning reason, understanding the human condition as senseless. And you know that the word absurd came from Albert Camus, C-A-M-U-S, Camus, who wrote the myth of Sisyphus, where he described the absurd. A lot of absurd playwrights are there. Samuel Beckett, Harold Pinter, Edward Albee, Eugene Ionesco. Very important examples of the theater of the absurd are Samuel Beckett's Waiting for Godot, End Game, Happy Days, three major plays by Samuel Beckett. Also Eugene Ionesco's The Bald Soprano, Rhinoceros, The Chairs, etc. A very important post-war movement. Then there is Harold Pinter's The Birthday Party, The Caretaker, Homecoming, important plays of the theater of the absurd. Next, we'll talk about epic theater. Epic theater is a kind of intellectual political theater, agit prop. After this, I will talk to you about agit prop also. A very intellectual kind of revolutionary theater or agit prop theater which attempts to provoke audiences towards social action. Epic theater attempts to provoke audiences towards social action. Epic theater intentionally alienates audiences. Epic theater creates alienation on the part of the audience. Audience do not identify with the play. The epic theater emphasizes its own artifice. This is not real. This is not lifelike. Epic theater demands that people should re-examine what they had previously perceived as reality. What we previously thought as reality should be re-examined, employing rational thought rather than unreliable feelings. What do you mean by that? Feelings are unreliable rather than that. We should employ thought. But in theater of the absurd, rational thought was questioned. The audience in epic theater is expected to recognize the sad state of society once they have been freed from social restraints and hopes they will then initiate change. People should bring about change 
That is the idea of epic theatre. Notable examples are Bertolt Brecht's Mother Courage and Her Children, The Caucasian Chalk Circle, Three Penny Opera. Bertolt Brecht wrote many important plays like that. The Life of Galileo and epic theatre employed alienation effect or were from Dung's effect. Bertolt Brecht is the most important practitioner. Agit Prop. It's a highly politicized theatre that originated in the 1920s in Europe. Especially, it originated in Russia and Germany and spread to the United States. It is a revolutionary political theatre designed for quick outdoor performance. The term is a portmanteau term of agitation and propaganda. Agit prop, agitation, propaganda. Agit prop is for quick outdoor performance. Therefore, it avoided elaborate costumes. It avoided stage scenery, lighting, technical sound, etc. Examples are the Italian playwright Dario Fo, who wrote The Accidental Death of an Anarchist. Also, Clifford Audetz, he is an American playwright, waiting for lefty. Then poetic drama combines the qualities of both poetry and drama. It is a mixture of high seriousness and colloquial element. High seriousness is there in poetic drama. At the same time, colloquialism, like spoken language, combination of tradition and the experiment, combination of the ancient and the new. Usually written in verse form, poetic drama. Notable examples are T.S. Eliot's Murder in the Cathedral. T.S. Eliot wrote other verse plays also. The Family Reunion, The Cocktail Party, The Elder Statesman, The Confidential Clerk. And also Christopher Fry wrote The Lady is Not for Burning. W.B. Yeats, Alfred Tennyson, etc. also wrote poetic drama. Then Meta Theatre. The term was coined by Lionel Abel, an eminent Jewish-American playwright and theatre critic in 1963. Meta Theatre influenced by Roman Jakobson's linguistics and poetics. Roman Jakobson was a Russian formalist. Also, Clement Greenberg's theorizations on abstract painting influenced Meta Theatre. Meta theatricality, what is that? A device whereby a play comments on itself. Meta theatre means theatre is commenting on itself. Theatre is highlighting the artificiality. It is not like lifelike, like in epic theatre. Meta theatrical devices, we say, like meta fiction it is. Drawing attention to literal circumstances of its own production, how the play is produced. The role of the audience in the play, etc., are highlighted in meta theater. Getting, getting me, everyone? Notable examples are Henry Gibson's A Doll's House. Doll's House is realism, but it has meta theatrical elements. Luigi Pirandello's Six Characters in Search of an Author. It is also a theater or a play which draws attention to its own artificiality. Six characters are searching for an author here. Getting me? Then, drama of ideas. Everybody knows it was pioneered by Henry Gibson and George Bernard Shaw. A type of discussion play it is. Drama of ideas is a type of discussion play in which the clash of ideas and hostile ideologies Ideas and ideologies are clashing, revealing the acute problems of the society and personal morality. Different from conventional comedy, in conventional comedy, such serious discussions will not be there. Characters are vehicles of ideas. The conflict, which is the essence of drama, is reached through the opposing ideas of different characters. You know, characters will have opposing ideas. They will be fighting on the stage. And this conflict will be a very important aspect. 
Did you understand everyone? Then notable examples are George Bernard Shaw's Arms and the Man, Pygmalion, Doctor's Dilemma. So many plays of Bernard Shaw as well as Henry Ibsen. A Doll's House, Ghosts, etc. Then Kitchen Sink Drama. Kitchen Sink Drama is actually an offshoot of Angry Young Man. Angry Young Man Drama was poor, you know, a kind of drama that came into being in the 1950s under the auspices of John Osborne. Angry Young Man movement was there in both drama and no <clears throat> novel. The angry young men were working class writers who were against the oppression of the upper classes. Working class writers um, who were against the oppression of the upper classes. And uh, angry young man movement showed anger, irreverence, vagrancy. People are not having a great life. They are lazy. They are attacking others. You know, from angry young man developed kitchen sink drama. It focuses on the trials and experiences of the urban working class. If angry young man movement uh, was a reaction against drawing room comedy, Angry Young Man Movement was a reaction against drawing room comedy. Angry Young Man Movement took us to the interior of working class homes. But Kitchen Sink Drama took us further inner, interior, the working class uh, people's squalor and misery of life, social realism. So through social realism, they depicted the squalor and misery of working class life in kitchen sink drama. It was an artistic movement expressed in visual and other realistic arts also depicting working classes, involving working class settings, particularly of Northern England. Why Northern England? Because it was about the post-industrial revolution England. And they discussed a lot of taboo topics like adultery, premarital sex, crime, etc. Protagonists were angry young men who were disillusioned with modern society. Notable examples are John Osborne's Look Back in Anger. It is both angry young man and kitchen sink drama. Sheila Delaney's A Taste of Honey. In some books we see this as angry young man play, but angry young man includes kitchen sink drama. Theatre of Cruelty, have you heard? Theatre of Cruelty is associated with Antony Nartod, a French actor, playwright, essayist of avant-garde theatre. He was a member of the Surrealist movement in Paris in the 1920s. Encyclopedia Britannica describes Theatre of Cruelty as a primitive ceremonial experience intended to liberate human conscious, human subconscious, and to reveal man to himself. What is man is revealed in this play, in these plays. Arthur wrote Theatre and Its Double, a famous book. Theatre and Its Double, where he felt that the focus of theatre in the West had become too narrow. You know, he, he thought that the, uh, the Western theatre is examining the psychological suffering of individuals, social struggles, that, but he was not happy with that. He wanted to delve into the aspects of the subconscious mind. And he wanted to uh, show what is the root cause of human beings' mistreatment of one another. That is theater of cruelty. Now, Moscow Art Theater, founded in 1898 by... Konstantin Stanislavski, a very major theater professional. Also, Vladimir Nemirovich Danchenko, another man is there. It was conceived as a venue for naturalistic theater. What is naturalistic theater? Ibsen was associated with realism as well as naturalism. Augustus Strindberg, Ibsen, etc. Augustus Strindberg is a very important figure of expressionistic theater. Expressionism. And uh, expressionism 
was associated with Augustus Strindberg, Eugene O'Neill. So they're all related, they're all avant-garde movements. So Moscow Art Theatre was a venue of naturalistic theatre. It contrasts to the melodramas that were Russia's dominant form of theatre at that time. At that time, Russia's dominant form of theatre was melodrama. This was against it. Sorry, guys. The theatre, Moscow Art Theatre, was the first to regularly put on shows implementing Stanislavski's system. Moscow Art Theatre associated with Stanislavski. It was hugely influential. Now, let me just remind you some of the major themes of post-war drama or modern drama. Many post-war plays are about aging and youth. Old people and young people, their clashes, very important theme. Many post-war plays are about politics. You know, power, politics, very important. Many post-war plays show the absurdity of human condition. And also gender and class are very important themes. Gender issues are de dealt with by Carol Churchill and people like that, Joanne Littlewood. Working class issues are dealt with in angry young man movement. And a lot of working class and uh, um, modern drama is also about education, poverty, squalor of urban life, etc. So that is a short video on modern drama. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.